uh, Ricky Youngblood, the film attorney, and J.R. Murphy, the serial critic. We just got done watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze remake. <laughs> uh, okay, so what did you think of this? Every fear that I had about this movie was true. The bad backlash on the last film and the look of the turtles and all the changes they made you know in this film they they played it a little too safe and it wasn't that original it, it wasn't as original as the first film it didn't have that standalone vibe that the first one did well I don't know because well not really because the first one had that whole ripping off amazing spider-man with that tower tip and it was like the exact same shot it was one thing I really couldn't defend on the movie it's like uh, yeah well they they did that yeah that happened but, um, but that being said it wasn't a bad movie not at all I actually really enjoyed it I mean it's <clears throat> much lighter in tone than the last one. Uh, here's the problem I kind of had with it. I mean, if we're going to go into problems <coughs> first. Yeah, I can pick a few out. Um, Bebop was a little annoying at times, but he wasn't that bad, really. But, uh... What is with, like... You ever notice, like, when these movies hit the uh, the climax, you're like, "Oh shit!" Uh, like, there there really doesn't feel like it earned like that last fight. Like, cause the first one, like, story wise, <coughs> there was a lot of action, but there really wasn't a lot of depth to it. And this one was sort of the same thing, where it was like there was a lot more shit. But then when it got to that last fight with Krang, I, I remember I was thinking, like. Why do we feel like we've got to this Krang fight like without enough setup really? Maybe, yeah. Krang was uh very well done. I liked what they did with him. I like you know, he But it's he's just very haphazardly just thrown into the, the yeah. story though. Like okay, we accidentally teleported Shredder into Dimension X, and now... No, they... Crane pulled him into Dimension X, remember, because there were tentacles coming out of the teleportation, like the uh, wormhole. Oh, well, there was a lot going on. Yeah, there was way too much going on in this movie. But, it... Then he is just like, I'm Krang! Hi, Shredder! I know everything that I need to know to just move this plot along! <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, and it was like, we. I feel like Krang needs a little more setup. And that's what I was kind of worried about, was that this movie was just going to kind of become a mess towards the end. Because it was like Bebop and Rocksteady, there's Casey Jones, there's Baxter Stock. It's like, they're really piling in a lot of characters. And it's like, well, maybe, are, maybe they're setting it up for something else, something big. Well, that's what, what's kind of what we were going with with the last one, though. It's like yeah. they're setting up a big ass big badass trilogy and that first one was sort of like the jump off point this one would be the middle point but if they're when they do a turtles 3 that shit's got to start making a little bit of sense oh no shit and uh, casey jones like, yeah, he's not as awesome as El elias coach he's Tales. not as awesome as casey jones should be period and like we got to see him like with the mask for one yeah, scene. one scene. But then again, to be fair, there wasn't a lot of Casey Jones in the mask in the first one. Although, I, you know what I did like? They, you know what? It, it seems like they put a lot of focus more on Easter eggs than they do filling out, like, story things. <coughs> like, uh, I thought it was kind of cool that the turtle van was a garbage truck. I was like, that's a nice reference to, like, the original because that's how they did away with Shredder in the end of the first one was he fell into that garbage truck. And I had a... Uh, <laughs> and then going to Brazil for that one scene, it was like, is that a reference to, to TMNT? TMNT? Yeah. Um, another note, I... the uh, Yeah, the garbage truck shooting the uh, sewer lids is a reference 
to like seriously hardcore turtle fans that grew up with it because I had amongst my Ninja Turtles action figure collection a turtle van that shot little plastic manhole lids right out of the grill. It had a little mechanism where it would shoot the manhole lids and you could like shoot them at the other at the Foot Clan action figures or the bad guys. And that was a, you know, even though I saw that in the trailer, you know, that was something that it was like, that's an Easter egg to like. <laughs> this is going to sound weird, but I, I kind of noticed it watching the last uh, last film. At a certain point, I don't know if it was because my buzz had completely worn off or, but you know that scene when they were opening, when they were opening the portal and it was Baxter, Stockman, Shredder, and Karai, they're standing around, they're opening that thing. Didn't it feel like the cinematography just changed into like almost TV movie quality? Like it felt like suddenly like it turned into like a Bandai show. I don't know. The whole movie kind of felt almost like uh, the whole movie kind of felt like it was a Bandai show just done right. Um, Another note that I have to make, Shredder. How are we supposed to possibly believe this is the same guy? And I, I might be mistaken, but I think it's the same actor, Brian T. I think that's the same guy that played Shredder in the first one, but they look completely different. You know what? Like, Shredder was so unimportant in the first film, I don't even he was, remember who played him. Or was, I don't even think I ever knew who played him. He was very unimportant in this one, too, when it all came boiled down to it. Like, yeah, you didn't get to see him bite at all. You know, they took a they character did. that was a total badass in the first one and made him a footnote in this one, which well, that was a running thing. that was a running theme though, because like he fucked over Baxter Stockman and he's like, "No, you're just a footnote," and then he gets up there and cranks like, you're I, "I didn't even remember you, freeze you, yeah, I'll just knock you off the platform and kill you, but let's just fr <coughs> freeze you for I'll save you for the next movie." Well, and see, here's something else. Is this one, you know, it feels like they're just going straight from the old cartoon. Oh, yeah. Even down to the fact, if you watch, like, a few episodes of the original cartoon, you know, Shredder's, like, a whiny bitch who never fights, and Krang, it, you know, just what? fucking bosses him around. So, like, this... That, that's pretty accurate, though, like, because, yeah, Shredder's, like, the... They, they did kind of establish in the first one a little bit, what little bit Shredder's in the movie, was that, like, yeah, he is a badass, the Turtles have that big fight with him, but, yeah, when he gets around Krang, he does kind of turn into a bitch, but Krang is supposed to be the next higher threat to Shredder, but I kind of feel like there should have been more focus on... I don't know, developing some something with Krang and Shredder yeah. more than just Krang Hi, up. I'm Krang. Open this portal, okay? Yeah. And and it's like, I'm back for the climax. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool seeing him fight what? Krang. It, but and, it, and this movie did not at all answer my question that was left at the end of the first one. The fuck happened to Sax? Eric Sax. He just... Like, he got hit with steam, and that was the last we ever saw of him. There I, I, would no... I would assume that he was just in prison and Shredder didn't bother breaking him out. I have Baxter Stockman now. Yeah, well, the one thing I, I'll admit that surprised me was, like, Tyler Perry's performance as Baxter Stockman. It was pretty uh, it was pretty good, you know? He, he served his purpose pretty well. He's okay well. when he's not writing and directing his character. Yeah. He was still kind of dumb, though. Well, that's... To be honest. Yeah. The whole movie was kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was a very silly movie. It was not... It didn't have the edge that the first one did. It didn't... It didn't have that... You, you know what it is? I, I, I was... I, I just remembered, but I was thinking <coughs> this in the movie. The bad guys are not really... I mean, what they're doing is, like, gigantic, but they don't seem like much of a threat. And this is another thing. There's not really a lot of ninja fighting. There's just a lot of really big, over-the-top action set pieces. Yeah, especially in this one. And it's like, now that they have, like, Bebop and Rockstar, I was kind of hoping to see something a little more along the lines of a one-on-one -on -one fight. 
between a turtle and one of these mutants. <coughs> but it's just shit flies around, they run around, they flip, and for some reason they can fucking halfway fly. Which I was, that was going on, like, that was the first thought I had watching it at the beginning, was it's like, you know, I, I kind of like that they, they do all this stuff, and, like, they're flipping around, and jumping off of buildings and stuff like the cartoons, but it's like, have they touched the ground in the past ten seconds? Like, I don't really feel like a fucking turtle <coughs> should be able to just, I don't know, fly around like Spider-Man. Yeah, it definitely, it, as good as the movie was, it definitely leaves a lackluster taste in my mouth. Like, still just so much missing. That, you know, it, it's like you were saying, you know, where's the story, where's the plot, there's, there's so much action and it's all, you know, in your face and... But like the like Shredder in the the nineteen ninety movie was menacing. True, he was scary as fuck. And he's a little less scary in Secret of the Ooze, but in this one he's not threatening at all. He's barely important. He's just like the bad guy, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it. It could have been. It could have been better. The storytelling could have been better. It's, it's like that was a fault in the first one too. Like yeah. I didn't like that they tied April and the turtles right together. I was like, well, that's kind of lazy. But all right, whatever. Um, this one, yeah. Let's just let's move them from set piece to set piece. They don't seem like they have to work for any information in these movies either. Like, Donatello just pulls it right up on the computer. It's like, oh, this thing is coming in. Oh, his name is Krang. It's like, all right, how the fuck are you... You're skipping the part where you actually have to stand in front of him and he goes, I'm Krang! Yeah. It. There's no... It, it, nobody introduces anybody to any of these characters just all seem to, to know each other without any... Like, Bebop and Rocksteady got the most development in this movie of anyone in it. Yeah, you're right. And and it was sort of getting on, like, a good path with that whole, you know, we can turn, you know, bat in, into people and be normal. Like, that was sort of an inner conflict where the movie was almost having, you know... Depth. Yeah, and then they were like, uh, fuck this, climax is coming, let's just... Let's go in as turtles and fight Krang, who that we know for some reason. <laughs> and they could have delved deeper into the whole, you know, it's like, well, what will happen if, we, if this stuff turns us into humans? You know, these guys have fucking superhuman abilities. You know, if it if they were to take that shit and it turn us turn them into humans. When I thought they were gonna turn into humans, though, I was like, I don't know if I like this. Yeah, that's true. But. But at the same time, it, it did make for a few minutes of interesting character dilemma. Damn, she's kind of nice ass. But as far as like, as far as the Ninja Turtles movie goes, yeah, it was good. But it feels to me too, also like the movie was made to entertain kids. Oh yeah, totally. Like it wasn't it like as much as the first one was made to entertain the, uh, you know, grown-up fans. I think it was, well, the first one had very much, like, I don't know, well, they try, they, they really tried harder <laughs> to make better movies back then than they do now. Now, the movies just look good, but <clears throat> most of them really, to me, they just don't, I don't know, they all seem like they're lacking something. I don't know what it is. Even the Marvel movies, as good as they are, I still am like, yeah, this just came out of a machine of perfect movie making. I, it's, I, I don't know. Even watching, like, the trailers, the mini, 
that preceded this movie it's just like I really I'm not rushing to the theater to see any of these yeah that Lego Batman thing might have been like the most intriguing trailer but well except for Ghostbusters I forgot that they trailered that yeah but uh god enough of the Lego shit I know it's like a big hit and all, but I've never seen the Lego movies, and it's just, I don't know, something about it bugs me. I don't want to watch a fucking movie made out of Legos. Yeah, like, as funny as some of that Batman, Lego Batman trailer was, I'm so tired of seeing Lego shit. You know, it's fucking pointless. Well, at least the Ninja Turtles are not Lego Turtles. Not yet. This is still... I mean, look, I, this is still better than that abominable cartoon they have on Nickelodeon now. Or The Next Mutation. Mm, yeah. Well, look, there's some really bad shit been done with the Turtles. This is still definitely better than 3. <coughs> that, yeah, that's definitely true. Um, I'm not going to say that I loved it. I liked it. It was okay. It, it didn't... It's better than Batman versus Superman. Well, it kind of suffered from this from one of the same stigmas that it had way too much going on in it, and it felt very it felt rushed. It's like the only thing they took their time on was the uh, was the computer animation, you know, was actually rendering the fucking movie. And other than that, it felt like oh, let's just let's throw Crane in here. Let's uh. Let's get Casey Jones. Uh, he's a cop. You know. Yeah, let's just throw as much shit into corrections, it as, we, I'm sorry. as yeah. we can. That wasn't a terrible backstory, but I kind of like the idea that Casey Jones was just an ex-hockey player that just decided to be a vin vigilante. He's just street trash that beats up other street trash. Kind of liked that backstory a little more. Yeah, and you know, I would have also, I would have liked to have seen more turtle action on you know with more conventional bad guys like there's so many great villains in the universe in the turtle universe that they could tap into and you know I want to see a rat king I want to see a live action rat king you know leatherhead that'd be a good one well considering that like this is the sixth turtle movie and finally there's actually characters from the goddamn mythos popping up into them I could say this movie was a big step in that direction but I still go back to the fact that I would like to see the goddamn ninja turtles do some goddamn ninja fighting against one of these mutants that actually looks like a one-on-one -on -one fight and not shit flying everywhere yeah like the whole movie, this whole movie felt like just exactly that, shit flying at you. It, well, this wasn't 3D, but I didn't... It's already a $21 endeavor. I didn't, I didn't spring in for the glasses. Yeah. Well, it could have been better. And I, I really hope that, you know, someday that one movie comes out that is just the definitive Turtles movie that, you know doesn't mess anything up you know and this one could have been that it it had the right ideas it just took them in the wrong direction and then threw a bunch of shit at you in the process okay well all right let's talk about some shit we liked because i did walk out of this liking a lot of things um the airplane scene was pretty fucking funny it was funny yeah there was a lot of humor in it they, um, they still do really well with balancing like the personalities of the and interactions of the turtles with everyone which to me as long as they can get the core of these four characters down these are still going to be watchable movies and they're still doing that very well um I didn't really feel like the hip hop Christmas album needed to be referenced again but that's just a nitpick yeah, they could have referenced something else. Like Splinter the, uh, was barely in this movie, too. And he looked complete, almost completely different from last time. He like, seemed shorter. No, he was... He was furrier. And his his fur was, like, white. I was hoping that with, like, them jamming Bebop, Rocksteady, and Krang, and Baxter Stockman, I was, I was kind of hoping 
because they've been pretty good about doing this is like every movie highlights a different sort of principal character and we we sort of spend the movie taking the ride with them this one it didn't do that this one broke the pattern that I was kind of enjoying for all those years like I was hoping this would be more of a shredder centric movie where you'd spend some time learning about maybe who the fuck shredder is and a little more about shredder and not just jumping from plot point to plot point although I see they definitely took the note no more transformer outfits for shredder which honestly I I liked his I did too. I liked the the black outfit. I wish he could have did something in it, but well, I mean I actually liked his outfit from the first one, you know. I thought he looked badass. You know, it, it it's just but see that's the thing, you know, I was talking about about the backlash of the first one and it's all nitpicky shit that like the things that I liked about the first movie everybody else fucking hated. Yeah, I I I definitely go into these things want you know a little more ap uh, amped up to like them. Like, I don't sit down and go, see how they fuck this up. But, yeah, this one, it started really good. But it, it kept really waning back into that kid territory. Like, the interaction between uh, Shredder and Krang at the beginning was first off i feel like crane i mean he's a giant brain and a robot he should be a little scarier yeah shredder's like oh hi <laughs> how you doing brain like yeah shredder didn't really seem that you know put off by the fact that he was being slapped around by a slimy fucking brain creature you know and yeah there should have been a little more I mean, I know Shredder is supposed to be, you know, this hardened badass, but that's a situation where you can go, holy fuck, a giant brain. Like, even the turtles wouldn't numb you to shit that weird right off the <laughs> bat. It's like, alright, look, I know I saw the giant four mutant turtles earlier, but this is fucking beyond strange. Yeah, it... It's weird because we're, you know, trying to start talking about things we liked about it and got back into things that we didn't. Um, soundtrack was a little bit better than the last one, I guess. Yeah, I kind of like the rendition of the um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme. It's a lot better than Knock Knock You About to Get Shell Shocked. Uh, there was another cool song in this. I can't remember what the hell it was, though. Um, well, honestly, I don't really have much else to say about the movie, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of a, it was kind of lackluster. I was looking forward to a lot more than, you know, I got as far in the, in terms of storytelling and, uh, character development, but it was... It is solid action. I gotta, you gotta definitely give Michael Bay credit that he definitely knows how to put an action sequence together. Yeah. Well, for some reason, I just, uh, I feel like of the two movies, I still prefer the first one. It. it spoke more to my taste as far as what I want to see in a Turtles movie. You know, um... I say if you're going to throw this... Because this one definitely topped out on using the classic bad language. I call it that because they're not really bad words anymore. Um, you know, a lot of shits, a lot of asses, a lot of, you know... But, at the same time, like, that's about the most adult element of the movie. That's about as dark as it gets. <coughs> yeah, it... Like, I would have been happy with that grenade killing off Bebop and Rocksteady. I honestly would have been. Yeah, well... Just because after they survived, like, you hear them in the thing and they survive, it's like, oh, God damn it! why did this movie have to chicken out there? Can go ahead and kill the stupid henchman. Then we can, you know, move on to, you know, maybe some different ones later. 
course, they'll be in it for two fucking scenes, and nobody will explain them. But it's it just feels to me like I, this series is going to do the same thing for me that X Men did. You know, it's going to start out strong and end up being so convoluted, and I'm going to it's going to be a big headache, and I'm going to be waiting for them to just stop making it and revamp it in about six years like they do everything the fuck else these days six years six months yeah <laughs> Dang. well we decided to stop the turtles franchise after part three we're rebooting it next year though look forward to seeing the origin story once again yeah origin stories are like i don't know kind of getting old all of it's getting old. I mean, that, that, that really doesn't help in that this scenario either. Of course, I'm still not as I'm not as tired of turtles as I am every other superhero. But the turtles also now one thing they definitely get right in this movie. I mean, even though they did kind of have that like deep moment, but even in the first one, even when they have like character dilemmas, like why is Raph so angry or Something like that. The turtles are different than every other superhero in the fact that they have fun with being superheroes. They have fun saving people. There's not all this like doom and gloom like where after it's like, we saved an entire city, yeah, but you blew up that one building. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we saved the fucking planet and a couple of people got killed in the process. Like, that doesn't really need to. I don't know, slow down the party. Uh, I ran out of steam on that. But <laughs> my point is, uh, they have so much joy and fun with doing what they're doing that you don't have to stop And in the movie. It's like, okay, this movie needs to get deep now. Think about what you've done. <laughs> but then again, I mean, they're different in the sense that, like, they're not people they were never people like they're borrowing humanity so it's like they appreciate it more but I don't know they still keep the fun going in this movie it is a fun movie to watch yeah I'll give it that I mean if this had been Turtles 2 when we were kids and went and seen Secret of the Ooze we would have shit yeah, definitely. In both of these movies, they're they are what we wanted to see as kids. B of course, this is the nineteen ninety one age is better for adults. But then again, like the nineteen ninety one had an underlying theme that none of the other ones really did too, and that was and it was just big in the nineties. But that whole teen runaway thing, like Shredder's plan, at least. They grounded everything but the four mutant turtles in some sort of reality. Whereas this one, like in this series, it's just way off the reality chart. Yeah. It's like people barely even question weird shit in, in these movies. Well, I don't know. They kind of did in the first one, but... <coughs> yeah, I'm not... It's definitely not the worst thing I've seen this year, but I don't know. I it could have. I, I kind of see what people's complaints are with these movies, and I'm starting to think that this is what it is in Transformers. That it's like there's just enough dialogue and story to make the action sequences make sense. Yeah, and then that's kind of where it <coughs> stops. Which that was nice to see in the last one and even still in this one because, I mean, the action scenes in the, the first three movies weren't spectacular, but they were still enjoyable because you got to see the turtles actually doing some martial arts and not half fucking flying everywhere. Yeah, that's very true. It, it seems to me like the turtles rarely ever actually fight you know and I mean in the first one they fought it seems like they fought more in the first one than they did in this one yet again in this one they're just fucking jumping 
and flipping. You know, it's... Well, it's like that, that plane sequence where it was like, all right, here we go again. We're going to reenact the uh, the avalanche, which I knew was coming because I remember seeing them on wa going down that river. And I was like, yeah, yeah go ahead. I was like, that's going to be the, the avalanche scene in this one. But then when it got back to, like, <coughs> Krang, and they're fighting Krang, it's like, okay, this is the Shredder beat from the first one, which I expect that. I mean, it's... But Krang almost turned out to be less of a threat than Shredder when it came down to the actual fight. Yeah. And it's sort of... I remember, you know what? It's sort of the, the same thing with Shredder, because he was going to dump that, chem that virus thing or whatever it was... And it's like, that's... He should have did that, and then that's where the first one should have had, like, its big climax would be in the midst of that chaos. You would think. But then they just <coughs> fight Shredder, and it stops. It's like, alright, I understand they're superheroes. That's supposed to happen, but... The Technodrome, like, peeks its head into, the, into Earth, and they just send it right back. Yeah. And... The threat never escalates which you could argue makes them more efficient superheroes than most but sometimes it does make for a pretty shitty climax in a movie that would be like if in Batman Begins when uh, Ra's al Ghul showed up with that water evaporator thing and two seconds before he turned it on Batman punched him in the face and turned it off <laughs> yeah, unplugged and then it. ran away <laughs> with it yeah and then it just like movie <coughs> over <coughs> Uh, let's see. What else was there in this movie? It is very hard for me to get over Casey Jones being just very uninteresting. Yeah. And, you know, Megan Fox in this one just... It's like, when did she become a fucking spy? You know, she's like... <laughs> I thought she got fired. She Yeah, she did get fired. Like, when did she get her job back? Apparently she didn't have it when she was spot, you know. Vern gave it back to her with his key to the city. Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, and fucking Vern. It's like, can we choose a can we choose a less interesting character to have so much to do with? He really does have a lot of. And this is something else I noticed in the uh, at the end credits. It's like. Why are the turtles credited fucking fourth? Like, they start being credited after, like, they go, okay, here's Laura Lenny, who was in the movie for, like, five minutes, maybe. She ate up five minutes of screen time, but she's not in a costume or a main character or anything, but she, she was in Congo. Let's bill her at number three. And then we'll put all of them. That's always been kind of a pet peeve of mine and movie credit sequences, which is a weird nitpick, but it's like, can the main characters be credited <coughs> first? And can, and, you know, something else I would have liked is if this movie would have ended on letting us know what was coming. Maybe even, maybe a hint. Yeah, something, there, there maybe... Really wasn't much of that. They did that, I mean, Shredder gets frozen and... Yeah, they Han Solo Shredder, which is fucking, which was very stupid. It's just like, come on. It wasn't as bad as Machete Kills, but anything that invokes Star Wars makes me think, oh, God damn it! Like, anytime I know they're stealing a beat from Star Wars, it gets on my fucking nerves. I just kinda... But then again, the Technodrome does kind of look like the Death Star, but... <coughs> yeah, I definitely wish that they would have... But we just went a little deeper. It's it, here's a good analogy as far as like to describe the action. I'll put it in video game terms. It's like Marvel versus Capcom three, where it's like you don't really get to play any one character. You play three characters at a time, and there's just shit going everywhere. And it's like, oh, the, the fight's over. I, mu I did I win? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like that's there's. There doesn't seem to be any personal connection <coughs> made with any of these characters. It's like, the Turtles meet Bebop and Rocksteady. That should have been pretty epic, and it was just kind of like, eh. Yeah. It definitely... 
it definitely was like a whole lot of shit for n nothing. Like, it was like from point A to point B, there was so much shit going on that you, you know, couldn't enjoy the journey as much. Yeah, I kind of. Uh, you know, that was one of my things. I'm getting it. tired of movies doing that. You know, they try to just stuff so much shit into it. It's the, it's kind of the problem with the whole um, retro repackage age. Is that, yeah, I mean, Marvel is, that's a whole nother beast. They're somehow, they're really good at doing that shit. But when other movies try to, you know, emulate that whole making a movie with like a million Easter eggs for fans to look for and see, which Turtles is actually doing a fairly good job of that. But it, it in the case of the Turtles, it's really loses focus to to that and it takes it eclipses the storytelling yeah it the, the movie was just it's just very overstuffed with shit like and it's also very it at times, it was very hard for me to connect it to the last one. You know, like... It's like the movie was trying too hard to convince me that it was a connection to the last one. They made Shredder look completely different, you know, as far as, like, his facial features. And, like, the chick that played Karai in this one was a completely different one. You notice they never said her name in the first one or the second one. I think they said it in the first one. Nah, they... I own the DVD and I've watched it out of boredom so many times. They never say her name. She just she just exists. You just gotta assume she's Karai because there she is next to Shredder. I swear they said it at least once. And uh, or is that just because we know who she is? And then yeah, it's just because you know who she is. And uh, I don't know. Shouldn't she have fucking been a little more fucked up from the? you know, last time she met the turtle. Yeah, she should be something like dead. Yeah, and then you gotta think too. Well, and another problem is like, they didn't even try to find an actress that looked anything like her. It's like, oh, she's Asian, she'll work. She was barely in the first one, so. She, she was in the first one more than she was this one, and she had lines in the first one. She didn't say a single fucking word in this one. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of the thing, like, that was something I was hoping would maybe this movie might delve into is Shredder and Karai and Baxter Stockman and maybe how the hell they all relate to one another. Yeah, where the fuck does Baxter Stockman come in? He's just like, you know, at least Eric Sachs had a backstory with Shredder somewhat. Oh, he was a sensei because he grew up in Japan for some stupid fucking reason. You know, Baxter Stockman's like, oh, I work for Shredder. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and revoke that upon further reflection. Tyler Perry was fucking awful in this movie. I guess so, yeah. Like, he started off okay, but by the end, yeah, he was like... I, I hate to keep bringing up the 1990 movie, but everybody in that movie was taking what was going on seriously. And nobody was really goofing it up for the camera. Because yeah. it's like, whoa, this is a stupid kids movie. Uh, uh, uh. Like, there's times when he was good, when he felt like, you know, what Baxter Stockman should be. And then he turns into fucking Krusty the Clown. <laughs> and most other scenes, particularly the portal scene, when this turned into fucking Stargate SG-1 quality cinematography... Which I must be the only person that notices that, that shit, because I, I tried pointing it out to Max when we watched the first one. He looked at me like I was nuts. But... <coughs> yeah, it's just like the... Like, goofy bad guys really do not... make a great, like, compelling antagonist, really. When they're... <laughs> Like, 
I, I, Bebop and Rocksteady are supposed to be stupid. And, like, they had a few bad lines that are kind of lame for, by today's standards. Like, oh, you got jokes? Yeah. It was just like, ugh. Because that was in the trailer, so I knew that was coming, but... Although I gotta say they 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 did at least got their origin story. Oh, that that's something else. What is that fucking bullshit about the mutagen taps into your inner animal? Suddenly yeah. it's playing by fucking Mortal Kombat logic. Yeah, and it's like, so does this prove evolution as well? And we all evolved from something different based on our personality. That doesn't even make sense to evolution. It, it doesn't make sense to anything. It's why couldn't you just say yeah I squirted some rhinoceros and warthog DNA in this shit before I stuck it in their necks I would have went yeah that that's perfectly plausible yeah but I guess that wouldn't work so I guess the turtles were reincarnated those four turtles evolved from four stoners apparently I. Yeah, I don't get it. It doesn't... Master Splinter in a past life, or... He was really meant to be a martial arts sensei, but he was a rat first, and nature was just hoping he would find this green shit that would tap into his inner old man. <laughs> in the cartoon, he was a person first, and because he, uh... And the mutagen changed him into, uh... The last animal he came in contact with, which was a rat. They had that thing in the first... Uh, not the first cartoon, but in the the new cartoon before the new shitty one yeah where that like it would meld your dna with whatever animal you last had contact with now with bebop and rocksteady that definitely wouldn't have in their case in this movie that definitely wouldn't have been a warthog and a rhinoceros but even still the inner animal the animality shit that kind of bugged me yeah it the then whole, again, I'm applying logic to a, a fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Well, see, that's the problem. That is first it? one spoiled us with the grittiness. Yeah. And then we never got it back. Like, so... I don't think any of them are ever going to hold up as being, like, as good or impactful as, that, as the 1990. But... I don't know. Up until after watching this, I was never really asking him to, I guess. But... This one, it's like, all right, can, can we tone down the kid shit? Most of your audience is sadly thirty. <laughs> the, see, yeah, that's that's the thing. The first one definitely catered more to my adult. But everything did. I mean, if you remember Howard the Duck, there was tits in it. Like yeah. movies were a lot more like trusting of the viewer with its content. And Beetlejuice is PG, drops an F bomb. Yeah, there's whores and shit. Yeah. And we're lucky in 1990 that the turtles weren't chopping off people's heads. <laughs> but, you know, you don't have to go... You don't have to do Rob Zombie's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but... God damn it, maybe, like... A little less kidified would have been... More acceptable. Yeah, I just felt like I was watching a very long, expensive cartoon. Uh I don't know, none of the CGI in this movie bothered me, but then again, it rarely does. Like, CGI has to be really, really bad to bother me. Yeah. And even then, there's a time context to it. Like, if I'm watching a movie from 1995, and they still haven't got CGI perfected yet, I'll tolerate something like Reptile and Mortal Kombat, or even some of the shit in Spawn. <laughs> I say some, because that fucking devil thing was inexcusable. No shit. But... And now the CGI looks really good, but, and it makes sense to why they use it, but at the same time, it took away the fighting. I'd like to see a goddamn one-on-one -on -one fight in one of these movies. Yeah, and you know what, CGI has, like, it has gone a little too far, you know, uh, when you go to a movie and you feel like... It's supposed to be live action, and most of the movie is animated, like, at least 80% of it. You're just like, what the fuck, you know? I mean, 
you like what you're seeing, but at the same time, you're so aware that you're watching a movie. You know? That's, I think, an age thing, too, because I'm kind of like that with everything I watch now. Like, very little things tap into that. Very few things feel real anymore, as far as mo movies are concerned. But, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't... <clears throat> I wasn't as overjoyed with the results of this one as I was the last one. Battery's about to die. Yeah, that's fine. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm still gonna get it. I am mean, gonna I'm, own it, yeah. I'm definitely gonna see it a, a couple more times. Maybe pick up on things I, I like more. Because, when going back and watching the other one, I... I definitely noticed a lot more things I liked than disliked. And I've, you know, picked up on a lot more just little things. But, <clears throat> yeah, it's, for the most part, it was a bit of a mess, but it's still fun to watch. I'm so glad I saw it. I kept up my uh, seeing him in the theater streak. I think this is the first time me and you have actually seen a Turtles movie in theater together, isn't it? Yep. I believe so. Dude, wait. Didn't we see Secret of the Ooze together? I, if so, I don't remember, dude. Because we I remember were, those first... If so, we had a, I'd have had to been, like, what? Six? <laughs> when well, that movie came out? Well, we were hanging around each other at six. So. Yeah, I mean, it's possible we saw that one in theater. Because I, I remember seeing it multiple times. I saw the first one a couple of times, too. You know, I'm, I may... Yeah, Because I, I remember I remember seeing Secret of the Ooze in Columbus... I remember, yeah, we may have seen I remember that going to the theater and them having like the uh, the stickers on the window that was just the giant uh, cartoon animated turtles. It was like these giant stickers they had on the window because Secret of the U like Turtles 2 was a big deal in 1991 or 92. When did that come out? 92, 91? I want to say 92, two years after the first one. Yeah, that sounds about right. And still took place in 88. <laughs> <laughs> Comparing the two for a moment, you know, this one does suffer from this, some of the same problems that the original sequel did, and the fact that they toned down the grittiness, and they toned down the, the darkness of it, they toned down, they toned down the movie a and lot. And there wasn't much to tone but down Actually, either. they toned it down way more this time, like... The last one was, you know, the last Ninja Turtles 2 was still really fucking fun to watch. I mean, I own it, and I can still sit down and watch it as an adult and enjoy it. Yeah, I do too. And, you know, as even though I pick up on the, on the kiddiness of it, it's not near as bad as this one. This one, I felt like I was watching an Ice Age movie or something. I felt like I was watching a Pixar movie. Like, it was it was kind of like, like Disney, Pixar, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was like I was watching Maleficent again because I watched that the other day, and that's one of those movies where it's like every everything is CGI except the people walking around in the movie, and most of them have been given CGI makeovers. <coughs> I don't want to see you know guys in turtle suits again. I was happy with the turtles in the first one. I'm still happy with the look of the turtles. I, oh, I don't know. They kind of. Yeah, they kind of doled them out in this one a little. Like, I kind of like the I noticed trashy Leonardo, look in the first one. Yeah, I noticed that Leonardo wasn't wearing that, like, weird thing he was wearing in the first one. Michelangelo wasn't wearing his beads and shit. Yeah, like, Raphael wasn't wearing his garbage jewelry. <laughs> like, I kind of liked that in the first uh, one. Yeah, I did too. They all, you know, they all looked a lot more... Well, no, Mikey had, like, a gold chain in this <coughs> one. He upgraded his bling. <laughs> Which is a pretty Mikey thing to do, I guess. Donatello is constantly surrounded by some kind of fucking Tony Stark Iron Man equipment. Yeah, and Donatello was skinnier in this one. The fuck, they stopped beating him? Did he fucking... They find out he was lactose intolerant and all they eat is pizza? And he had to fucking go to... Well, the fact that they're ninjas and all they eat is pizza is one of the biggest stretches. The fact that they're turtles and all they eat is pizza, dude. I have a pet turtle. I guarantee you that motherfucker won't you touch any pizza. You force feed that thing a pizza. <laughs> but even still, like... 
it should be the teenage morbidly obese turtles with the amount of pizza these things eat. Like, pizza is not something that gives you the energy to defy gravity and jump from building to building. <laughs> uh, pizza gives you the energy to take a shit and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More like that. You remember that Family Guy bit where they did, like, that Jake and the Fat Man and the guy's, like, solving the crime? Yeah. And the Fat Man's just like, what do you what do you think was in that Danish? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would you be like it, on a diet You think it was pizza. cheese? <laughs> I don't do so well with cheese. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a nap right now. <laughs> close my eyes. I don't know. I'm kind of. I I don't see the need to have this to even rate this movie PG-13. It was definitely more of a PG movie. Yeah. Other than a few little things, I guess. I mean, uh, a few not so bad curse words that can be put on TV. I, yeah, I, yeah. And Roxanne and Bebop were kind of annoying. They weren't that annoying until they became mutants. Then they became annoying. Yeah, they were pretty annoying beforehand. It's still not as bad as in Turtles 3 where everybody's ADR is just stepping all over each other and there's lines that have no reason to be said that are just being thrown around because... Okay, when they introduced themselves to Casey Jones and Mikey did the introduction and they had like the game show music yeah. playing, that was fucking funny. See that? It was moments like that that I want to see more of. It's like that is what makes the Turtles awesome, you know? As far as the, okay, you know, the movie, see, it's just this problem I have is that I'm so split on, I cannot say I love this movie. I can't say that I didn't like it, <coughs> I, I was, but I legitimately could say that I very much enjoyed the first one more. I, and the, and I, I was kind of distracted by the foot and a half of screen that wasn't actually on the screen. Oh yeah, thanks for that, Regency. <laughs> Regency Theater. They gave us a spiffy little ticket, but I don't know what the fuck this thing is. Yeah, it's a ticket. Whatever. I mean, it's a postcard. Yeah, yeah, that was a send that shit to my. Once brother I noticed that, house. I was like, that's kind of annoying. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> Which part was annoying? But the, the the fact that there was a piece of the screen missing. Is that all the cigarettes you got? Yeah, that was pretty irritating. Not the worst thing I've ever had happen in a movie theater, but... No, the worst things I've ever had happen in a movie theater always is always like other moviegoers. Yeah, like, we were one of six people watching this thing. Yeah, that, you know, was a bad sign to me as soon as I walked in. You know, a anecdotally, when I went and saw Ninja Turtles 3 years ago, I had to st like sit in the aisle because all the seats were taken to watch that piece of shit. <laughs> that was a sold out <laughs> show. Yeah, this one was... As soon as we walked into a... Uh, as soon as we walked into a theater that just had like nobody in it, I was like, oh shit. I, I kind of knew that I wasn't in... I, I knew it wasn't going to be as good as I thought it was going to be. and that And that's really what this all comes down to it all boils down to I knew some of the problems I was gonna have with it going into the movie but I also had higher hopes for the movie than it delivered I I had one uh, I saw that one trailer a year ago and I've avoided every other piece of information I could since like I didn't even really want to know Krang was gonna be in this movie until I saw him but they had to leak that because you have to know the fucking movie from beginning to end before you go see it now thanks to the internet yeah. And internet movie news buzz. That's another thing, too. Remember, like, when you went and saw, like, the... F well, I guess maybe you don't remember, but when they were trailering the... It wasn't even a finished movie when they were trailering the first one. Like, they sounded weird. Like, in that whole, I love being a turtle, he's like, I love being a turtle! And then you saw the movie, and Michelangelo sounded nothing like that. Which is probably good. Oh, yeah. But, uh, 
but that was like all you got unless you were really like into collecting magazines but even still they were vague now it's like all right here's everything you can expect when you watch this movie so nothing comes as a, a surprise like i know everything i'm supposed to be pre uh, supposed to be you know judging critiquing and seeing before i see the movie yeah that i don't think helps so it builds up an anticipation that the thing is going to be either bad or good. I mean, like, if you look at the current situation with Ghostbusters. <clears throat> but people did that with uh, the first Ninja Turtles. They decided, like, a year in advance that the thing was going to suck. And they went and saw it and went, yeah, it sucked. And it's like, no, it didn't. Yeah, it was fucking good. It was a lot better than this one. I'm going to go ahead and say that now, in my opinion. The first time I watched the first one, I was very fucking pleased with it. When those credits rolled, I was happy. You know, it it spoke to my childhood. It gave me everything I was expecting in a Turtles movie. God damn it. And then some. Here, just take another L&M. I don't know what pack of cigarettes. Yeah, this shit's fucking pissing me off. But, uh... I don't know, hopefully the next one will be better. I, I honestly hope so. Is it, it wasn't terrible, but it definitely wasn't great. It, it, it was... It was very mediocre. It... I don't know, I, I would... Re if you like Turtles, I mean, it should be an, at least an enjoyable movie. I did enjoy watching it. It's not one of those where I, I'm leaving going, what the fuck was that shit? Uh, like I did with another movie this year. But at the same time, I don't think there's another hour left on this Ninja Turtles movie that we weren't we didn't get to see in the theater either. Yeah. But I also saw Civil War not long ago and Deadpool. <coughs> I mean... Yeah, Deadpool was, uh, Deadpool was good. It, I don't know. It's, the last few movies I've seen in theaters, like, they were good, but they weren't just fucking grand. You know, they were great. They, and, you know, Deadpool, as good as it was, I still find it a, just a tad bit overrated. It is because everybody acts like it's the first comic book movie that ever had blood and uh, like cursing and violence and it's uh, not really people also like I don't know no it's just the yeah, nobody likes the ones that had all the blood and violence and cursing and nudity and pegging jokes everybody hated those fucking movies they kidified everything and now it's where it's like oh my god the superhero said fuck can you believe this is setting the curve on all comic book movies? It's like, no, they're just going back to being fucking movies for people above the age of 10. Yeah. But still, I I, I liked this movie. Uh, I have, I don't know, a couple little problems with it. I mean, I, I would prefer to see a darker Ninja Turtles, but I don't think that'll ever happen again. I think that first one, we just got really lucky. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie about as much as I would two or three hours straight of the cartoon series. That's my honest opinion. It, it, it didn't feel like a Ninja Turtles movie. It felt like a very long, expensive episode of a Ninja Turtles cartoon. I'm out of shit to say about this movie. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, that's our review of Ninja Turtles 2. Um, so I didn't hate it, but... Eh, I came out with uh, more problems than I wanted to. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm glad we're at least not sitting here going, you know, well, I guess we are. We have been kind of trashing it this entire time, but, all right. I got nothing else to say. It yeah, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. It's better than Turtles Three. It's, it's better than a lot of the garbage that's come out in the Ninja Turtles name. Uh, yeah, that's definitely true. But it's also not the best. <laughs> all right. Well, so that's it for that. <laughs>